Hello and welcome to class time. Remember, you can catch us live every weekday from 9 to 10 a.m. on TVJ and on OneSpotMedia.com. You can also keep up with us on our various social media platforms and use the hashtag to make queries or answer online questions. I am Latoya Shiraya. And I am Karima Mundell Thomas. And we are your math teachers for today's CSEC Mathematics session. Let's begin. Great. So what are we doing today, Karima? Consumer arithmetic. Mm -hmm. And for today, we have uh, some nice objectives lined up for you. We're going to be solving problems, as we can see on screen, relating to tax and rates. We're also going to be solving problems involving payments by installment, as in the case of higher purchase. OK. All right. Before we get started, Karima, I have a rich joke I have to give you. Oh, dear. Right? So, uh, you know how you're in your yard doing whatever and the men passing by with their weed walkers and cutlass and, you know, mm -hmm. room and break and all them all lovely things, things, right? Yes. So I was watering the, the, the lawn and the man stopped and he was like, Mommy, no, I'm going to cut your yard for you. So I said to him, not really, but what's your rate? And the man stood there looking rather puzzled, like, you want me to cut the yard, you know, want me to cut the yard. Mm -hmm. So I said, what's your rate? I have to know what's the rate first. And the man was like, mommy, you want me to cut the yard, you know, want me to cut the yard. Then my neighbor was like, how much you charge? And the man told me the price he was charging. And I was like, oh. oh. So you don't usually use or hear the word rate. So he clearly did not understand what I was asking when I said, what's your rate? So, you know, Latoya, it's very important that you brought up that point mm -hmm. because we want to ensure that our students understand what rate really is before we actually get into the meat of the matter. I think that so, is important. Let us talk a little bit more about rates. All right. So in the case of my weed worker gentleman that was passing by in mm -hmm. my community, the rate in that case would refer to a fixed price or cha charge for something. So whatever he was charging to cut the yard would have been his, his rate. rate. Whatever your tailor charge when you go to make an alteration to a piece of garment, that's the rate your tailor mm. is charging. Makes sense. That makes sense. But I'm seeing also, Latoya, that rate may also refer to a comparison between two related quantities. So most times, we, the second quantity tends to be time. Mm -hmm. For example, we might hear per second, per hour. But we know that it could be anything. Right. For example, think about somebody who may be painting. Mm -hmm. You know, that person would be charging per second or per hour. They probably would charge you per square meter, maybe. Right. Or some measurement Or like the that. tilers, they charge per square. They usually do feet or so, but because yeah. we're the metric system, you'd say per meter or kilometer, right? All right, not for Squared. time, though, but yeah. Squared, yeah. <laughs> so let's look at some other examples, though. Interest rate. Mm -hmm. Now, that's one that people are often interested in because if I am going to take out a loan, Latoya, oh, anything yes. that I'm going to do, I want to know, you know, what's the rate, what's the cost per annum for that. Right, yes? right, And that's right. important, isn't it? Agreed. Agreed. We also have telephone rates. What's the charge per minute? Mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to go into that. Yeah. Right? Let's leave that one there. And then we have exchange rate. How much Jamaican dollar per US dollar? There you or go. per Canadian dollar or pound if you have anybody over in England. <laughs> we have water and light rate. We don't usually talk about these things, but our local... Um, electric and water companies do charge us per liter and per kilowatt. So that's true. And it, it's, it's on our bills, you know, if we actually pay attention, yeah. we'll actually see the rates. Sometimes it's at the back of the bill, right, but right. we just need to pay attention to it. I, I think it's more important to just look how much you owe and pay it before the due date. Ha, right? Funny. <laughs> and then we have, unfortunately, 
the crime rate, yeah. which is usually looked at per day, per month, per, per annum, per year, right? So yeah. when we talk about rates, it's either um, a fixed price or we're looking at a comparison, comparison between two related quantities. True. And you know what, Latoya? Since we're looking at CSEC content, mm -hmm. I want us to actually zoom in on the exchange rate because I would have seen questions pertaining to the exchange rate when I would have looked at the past CSEC papers. Mm -hmm. So let's see if we can help our students to, you know, I try. Got you. A, yes, I got you. I got one you. of those questions. All right, so here's a question. For this question, you're going to use the rates given below, right? And so while on vacation in Canada, mm -hmm. John used his credit card to buy a tablet for 300 Canadian dollars, right? And we want to know what is the value for the tablet in Jamaican dollars. Now, if you look above the question, you can see the exchange rates right. given. So for one Canadian dollars, that is equal or equivalent to 119 Jamaican dollars and 50 cents. And for one Canadian dollars, it is equal dollar. or equivalent dollar. <laughs> yes. It is equal or equivalent to 90 US cents. cents. Yes. So I'm looking at this question, Latoya, and it's mm -hmm. asking us, so the tablet cost 300 Canadian dollars. Yes. And they're asking us for the value of the tablet in Jamaican dollars. Yes. Now, when I look at these types of question, mm -hmm. immediately a kind of racial idea comes to mind. So I'm just going to go to the board a little bit just mm -hmm. to talk through what, how is it that that racial idea comes to my mind and then see if we can use that to answer the question. All right. Sounds so, good. Imagine in a class, for example, you have uh, uh, the ratio of boys to girls, maybe. Mm -hmm. So let me just write quickly. We have boys and we have girls. Now, the ratio of boys to girls would be one boy to every two girls. Okay. Right? Now, that would automatically mean, Latoya, if mm -hmm. I have two boys, how many girls do you think I'm expecting? So it's one to two. So for every one boy, it's two girls. So if it's two boys, I'm thinking four girls. Four girls. Good. Right? Let's extend this a little bit more. What about if it's three boys that are in the class? How many girls would we have? So, all right. So I think, mm -hmm, that's six girls. <laughs> six <laughs> girls. Now, what we're seeing here is some level of proportionality or, right. or equivalence. Right. So what we're seeing here is that how the boys are increasing, right? It's proportionate to how the girls are increasing. So right. pretty much, if we multiply the number of boys by a particular value, right. then the number of girls will have to be multiplied by that same value. Right. Now, so in this case, the girls are twice for the, the first boys. For example, yes. Or two times the boys. All right. Now, did you know that fractions can really bring out this concept as well? Watch this. So I'm just going to use the first two that we mentioned. So watch this, Latoya. Look at this beautiful relationship coming out. So, so, I, so you're representing the boys as one to two. So the right. fraction so, bar in that case would so represent the So this is showing two. what's happening where boys are right, concerned. Right. And over here, I'm showing what happened where girls are concerned. So your numerator is two and your denominator is four for the girls. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a question. Can you simplify two quarters? You can, and I think it's a half. Oh, so then it means, therefore, that I really could... What I'm, what I'm using here is an equality, so we have what we call now equivalent fractions, fractions coming right, out here. Right. Isn't this wonderful? It so is. So let's look at what we had earlier. So we had three boys with mapping to six girls. Right. So it therefore means if I were to look at the first ratio and the last one, I'm seeing the same thing happening right here. So Latoya, I am seeing where equivalent fractions can actually help us in answering this question. I may be saying, boys, girls, what does that have to do with money? Right. Switch gear a little for me. What if it's $1? Mm -hmm. 
But if it was one dollar, is equivalent to two dollars in another currency. Right. So two Jamaican dollars, let's assume it's Jamaican, right. would actually be equivalent to four dollars in that currency. Right. So you see that it's really the same thing. Right. Same it is. idea. It is. So the point is that you know that proportionality is important when it comes to the exchange rate. Okay, I just want I just want just just on the board um, to yes. show. I'm right. sorry, I made an error in writing, right. so I said the six in my head. <laughs> but you wrote <laughs> and three. wrote three because I'm yeah. thinking one third. So let me yeah. just fix that. And then um, the two six quickly. would be equivalent to, to one third. third. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. All so right. let's see if we can use that to answer this question. Alrighty. So we are changing the question. Ask us how many Jamaican dollars yes. would. 300 Canadian dollars be equal equivalent or equivalent to. to? There you go. Right? So, representing our information algebraically, you know, to help us in our solving, we're saying that 300 Canadian dollars is equal to X Jamaican dollars. And clearly, we want to know what X is. Yes. Right? And we already know this was given, this information was given that one Canadian dollars is equal to 119 Jamaican dollars and 50 cents. And using that same equivalence and ratio idea, there we can go. use that to help us in solving this question. Right. So unlike what I had on the board, in this case, there's something that we don't know. Right. But because of the relationship that we saw earlier, yes. we can actually use it to figure out what we don't know. Right. So here we have... 300 as our numerator, numerator right. and one as our denominator. The 300 representing that 300 Canadian dollars that we know and the one representing that one dollar to Canadian the to one Canadian way. to the Jamaican dollars. Right. And here we have our X because the 300 would match up to the X because we are trying to find out how much Jamaican dollars is 300 Canadian dollars. There you go. So we have X as our numerator and 119 and 50 cents as our denominator. So you can see where the one in terms of the rate that was originally given is matching up to the $119.50 dollars and, 50 cents. Cents. and the 300 is matching up to the X which we want to find out now. There you go. And right? once we understand this principle at all, the rest of it is pretty much algebra. Yes. You know, because what's happening is that we are now going to try to make X solving the subject. For X. Solving for X. There right? you go. Okay. So we would have multiplied both sides. By one hundred nineteen dollars and fifty cents. In the in in trying to get x the subject of the equation, there you finding go. out what x is, and through simple calculation, we know we now know that x is thirty five thousand eight hundred fifty dollars, and that yeah. means that yes, um, our three hundred Canadian dollars is actually equivalent to thirty five thousand eight hundred fifty Jamaican dollars. Cool. That's a lot of money for a tablet. But it is, but in this time, tablets are essential. Yes, and they so, are. You know, we're willing to spend uh, to get a very good one. That indeed, last. agreed. So let's move on. All right. So the second part of the question asks or says that John's credit card limit is forty-five thousand Jamaican dollars. Yes. And they want to know how much Jamaican dollars does John John does he have left? Yes, John for use on his credit card. So how much money leave on the credit card after he would have bought the tablet? Well, that's pretty simple, Atoya, because uh, he spent 35,850 Jamaican dollars. Right. And his limit is 45,000 Jamaican dollars. Right. So that's an uh, easy subtraction because we need to take out what he spent from see the what limit. he has left. $9,150. Hmm, interesting. Not a lot. Not a lot indeed. Spend wisely, John. All right, then now the third part of the question says, from Canada, John decides to travel to the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Calculate the amount of U.S. dollars he will be able to spend using his credit card. Hmm. All right, so going back to the rate, I'm actually seeing where we don't have 
Canadian dollars to US dollars. No, man, we have Canadian dollars to US. We Jamaican don't have Jamaican dollars, Jamaican dollars to, to US, US dollars. So right. what we have is 9,150 Jamaican dollars. Yes. And we want this in, in US, US dollars. Right. right. So based on the rate that we're giving Latoya, it seems to me that we are going to have to convert to Canadian dollars first mm -hmm. and then convert from Canadian dollar to US. So this is pretty much a two-part question, students. Yes? All right, take two us parts. through, Karima. So part one. So we're converting from Jamaican dollar to Canadian dollar. So we want to know what's 9,150 Jamaican dollars to Canadian dollars. Mm -hmm. All right, so again, it's useful to write our rates you know, just as I had written the ratio on the board earlier, mm -hmm. that helps us in actually creating our equivalent fractions. Mm -hmm. Good? So from what I'm seeing on screen, I would now say that X, as my numerator, divided by 1, yes, is equivalent to $9,150 divided by $119.50. I just want to just to point out clearly that you will see that the numerators are um, speaking to the first row, which is the Canadian dollars that we don't know, to the Jamaican dollars that we know. Yes. And then the denominators are speaking to the exchange rate that was given. Okay. Um, just to point out, though, Latoya, that we could have used the exchange rate that's given as the numerator. Yes. Yes, just so that, you know, students understand right. that it could be that way as well. And that's so the you, beauty about math. You could have written no one, way. one divided by X is equal to $119.50 $50 divided, divided by 9150 Correct. So if you would have inverted, inverted your fractions, both of your fractions, it would have been fine. You would have gotten the same result. result. That's correct. So we know that one, um, x divided by 1 is simply x. Right. And so we're dividing 9,150 by $119.50. The dollar signs are not there right now, oh. but we are sure that when we get to our answer <laughs> here, we now know that 9,150 Jamaican dollar, dollars is equivalent to $76.57. Canadian. Now we need to go to part two because this question did not end there. They asked us to convert to US dollars. Okay. So now we have $76.57 Canadian and we want to change that to US. Right. So we now have to use that exchange rate that is applicable to this particular conversion. So we know that one Canadian dollar is equivalent to 90 cents US. And again, just as what we did earlier, we looked at the ratio yes. and we're seeing here that this means that $76.57 divided by 1 is equivalent to that unknown, which we have called X, X in this right. case, divided by 0 0.9 or 90 cents. And All just right? a note, you can call your unknown anything. Y, K, L, M, Q, Va Apple, any variable any that variable, suits you, right? pretty much. We just usually tend to use X all the time. So from here, again, we're using up our algebra skills. Right. So here we see that to make X the subject here, we need to actually multiply both sides by 90 cents. Right. And that pretty much tells us that X has a value of 68.91. So since we're dealing with money, John is going to be able to spend US dollar, this is US now, $68.91 from his credit card. I sure hope John has extra money because that's, that's a not lot a of lot. things, man. You can get 68 things in the dollar store. Okay, point taken. Probably 69 if they have right. something less than a dollar for 91 cents. Point taken. But let's, let's see if, if we can look at something else that speaks to rate, Latoya, because we talked about several examples, exchange rate, telephone rate, and right. several earlier. So it would be unfair for us to just do exchange. So let us jump to a question that deals with telephone and see if we can help our students here. All right, and this was a question from the 2005, January 2005 CSEC paper, mm. and it reads, Kim has two telephones. One is cellular and the other is landline. 
The rates of local calls are shown in the table below. So, um, the cellular phone has no monthly rental fee. However, the landline has a $45 rental fee charge. Mm -hmm. For the cellular phone, it's $0.85 cents per minute. And for the landline, it's $0.15 cents per minute. So the first question asks, in one month, calls were made lasting for a total of one hour and five minutes. Show by calculations that the cost for using the landline telephone was less than the cost for using the cellular phone. Hmm. So that seems as if we're going to have to do both. We're going to have to work out the yes. cost for both the landline and the cellular phone and then make a comparison. We will. All right. So it, it says duration of one hour, five minutes. Yeah, but then the charge in the table says charge per minute. Right. So it means that that one hour is posing a little problem, lads. I think we need to convert this duration strictly to minutes. What do you think? I think so too. Yes. So we all know 60 minutes make, make an one hour. hour. So one hour and five minutes would definitely be 65 minutes. All right. Now, the cellular bill, as we noted, did not have a rental fee. So pretty right. much we're just calculating call charges. Right. So it's 85 cents per minute and it's 65 minutes. So we can simply multiply that 65 by 85 cents. And so the cellular bill is actually $55.25. Hmm. Wonder how that compares to the landline. Yeah, who, which you think is more? I don't want to guess, <laughs> honestly. So let's, let's talk about the landline bill now, students. I hope you're calculating along with us, all right? Now, you will note that in the table, the landline had a rental charge. So we have to be careful now because we must include the rental fee and the call charges, all right? So rental fee in this case is $45. And the call charges, we know it's 15 cents per minute and it's 65 minutes. So we can easily complete that multiplication, which gave us $9.75, and we add the rental fee to that. So now we're seeing that the landline bill is $54.75. Not much difference, but clearly we can see that the cost for using the landline is definitely less than the cost for using the cellular phone even though the landline had a rental fee. Yeah, but you say that 15 cents mm -hmm. compared to 85 cents per yes. minute. Yes, yes. It, 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 yeah, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I leave it there. <laughs> so let's see if there was a second part to this question. There is. It says, for the month of March, the landline telephone was used and the bill was $54.60. Hmm. Calculate the total time in minutes for which the calls lasted. So if my memory serves me right, we're talking about the landline here mm -hmm. and it had a rental fee, correct? Yes, it did. So it means that that $54.60 is not just for call charges, mm -hmm. is it? No. no, because the rental fee is actually included in that. Right. So I'm thinking we need to take out that rental fee mm -hmm. to actually separate it so we can see what amount is paid for calls only. Agree? Yes. All right. So once we have taken out that $45, we have $9.60. So we have $9.60 left for call charges. But the rate per minute is 15 cents. Yes. So I'm thinking we need to figure out how many 15 cents we can get out of $9.60. Do we want to leave mm, and yeah, we could. let them work it out? Yeah. And, and tell us when we'll come, we come back? All right, no problem. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more CSEC Mathematics.
Welcome back to class time. Let's pick up where we left off. Now, Latoya, just before the break, we were actually calculating this particular question where yes. we were given the bill of $54.60 and we were actually asked to find out the total time in minutes for which the calls lasted. Yes. Now, we had already taken out the rental fee and figured that the call charges was really $9.60. Right. So we're at the point now of figuring out how many minutes would we have to talk to pay $9.60. Right. So we, we talked about the rate per minute being 15 cents, and towards the break we said we needed to figure out how many 15 cents we can get out of. $9.60. $9 but subtraction is a very long process. Right. Repeatedly subtract. So a division will work. Yes. Right. So let's divide $9.60 by the rate, which is 15 cents. So how long? How long? Let's see. Yes. 64 minutes. So if I'm using my landline and I talk for over an hour, my bill is $54.60. Yes, including the rental charge. Right, because nice. you have to pay for the phone you're talking on. There you go. <laughs> All, right. All right. Now, taxes, we said in the objectives that we're looking at rates and also taxes. Now, taxes is one of those things that us Jamaicans... We don't like. That's not what I was going to say, but oh. we're, we're concerned. Uh, uh, we are concerned uh, about taxes. All right. And so we want to just talk a little bit about what taxes are and how they come into play in our daily lives. All right. So when we talk about taxes, we're talking about these compulsory contribution to state revenue levied by the government on workers' income and business profits or added to the cost of some goods and services and transactions. True, yes. For example, <laughs> income tax. Tears. And I'm seeing a whopping 25%, but I'm glad for the part that came after <laughs> that said 25% of the taxable income. Tears. So not all the income is taxed. Remember, there's a, there's a threshold tears. that is taken out. Real tears. Before that 25% is, is calculated. So income tax of a person who are working. And yeah. they're getting an income. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Education tax are also for people who are working. All right. So, yes. so that's 2.25%. And then this one we all know because we pay it in the supermarkets, etc. Yes. The GCT, general consumption tax, which is now 15%. And of course, we know we pay land or property tax. So if you buy a piece of land or you a home, which is on a piece of land, okay. you'll have to pay tax. I wonder where else it will be. <laughs> but yes, we have to pay tax. Also transfer tax. So there are several others, but these are just four that we're exposing our students to today. Right. Now, as we talked about taxes, uh, it makes no sense to have this discussion, you know, in an abstract way. We want to bring it Agreed. home, looking at a real life situation. How does taxes come into play? And taxes in our everyday lives. Yep. If you are buying goods and services, there goes your tax. <laughs> okay. So let's look at this practice question. <laughs> now, the marked price of a freezer in store A is $30,000. But you see here now, a tax of 15% will be charged on each purchase. So if I go to store A, I'm going to have to pay a 15% tax on anything I buy in there. Mm. In store B, a freezer of the same make and model is sold for $34,000, inclusive of tax. A so tax already in this one. Right. So I was cool. just about to say that even though sometimes you're not seeing plus GCT or on plus the tax. thing or plus tax that you're buying, it doesn't mean that tax is not on it. It just means that the price that you are given already included Include. the yes. tax. So and more some than, stores do that. So more than yeah. likely, we all are paying tax. <laughs> all right. Now, John has a particular belief. Here it says that John believes the freezer is cheaper at store A. And I can't see why John think that, you know, because 30000 is right up there. When he walks into store A, he sees $30,000. And then when he gets the, the bill, he sees another money and he says that he was robbed. Aha. Well, let's see. So 
is done correct, that's what we want to find out. We don't know. And we're going to have to justify whether or not we think he's correct. So let's do some calculations. Now, in store A, we already spoke about the marked price being $30,000 and the tax is 15%. So pretty much, Latoya, we now need to calculate what's 15% off $30,000 to figure out what the tax is. So John is going to pay a whopping $4,500 extra mm -hmm. if he purchases the freezer in store A. Yes. So in store A, the price inclusive of tax is $34,500. Yes. What was the price in store B again? Hmm. $34,000. And John thought it was cheaper in store A, not true. Mm -hmm. Is he correct though? Not quite. There's no not quite about it. <laughs> no. He's not correct. <laughs> the freezer is cheaper at store B. So you see how tax becomes important because yes. you now have to pay attention to you know, what it is you're buying and whether or not the tax is already included right. in the price that you are seeing on the item. And I just want to make a note that some taxes are deducted while some taxes are added. So like in the, in, in the case of the income tax and the education tax, that's deducted from your salary. And you paid know? to someone else. So right. someone else gains. Right, right, right. Oh, and I then in the terms of the GCT, that is added to, to what? the price, to but the then price. technically deducted from your pocket anyway. So <laughs> it, it still boils down to the same idea. <laughs> yeah. So it's paid to someone yeah. somewhere. And as you can see, it is a percentage of All right. the, the, the quantity or the price of the good, in this case, the freezer. All right. <laughs> so, oh, oh. you know, as I see that TV, I wish it was a laptop up there because right now, I'm having a laptop challenge. I think we all are, and aren't we? I, I don't have any money to go purchase a laptop cash. <laughs> and we're here for you, sis. Oh, that's what this is about? We are here for you. Talk to me about higher we purchase are here for you. I need a solution like now. You don't have a laptop and you need a laptop and you don't have any money? I'm here for you, girl. All right. That's what we call higher purchase. Mm, and tell me about it. There are a lot, quite a few, business places in Jamaica that offer this service. So higher purchase is a service. Now, what does right. higher purchase do? You know, it's an arrangement for buying, as you, the consumer, mm -hmm. goods, where the buyer makes an initial down payment, or not, depending, depending yes. and pays the balance plus interest in installments. Now, there are some keywords here. Down payment, what is that? That's the money you initially pay um, on the good or service that you are taking out on higher purchase. So another word for down payment is the deposit. Right. All right However, fine. there are some places that say zero dollars down. You don't have to so pay anything. So you don't anything. have any initial payment. No, no you deposit. don't have any initial payment. That's right. That means so some. One I might try. <laughs> but anyway. And then you have installments. Yes. Now the installments are the sum of money due as one. Of, of several, several equal, equal. payments mm -hmm. for the item. And you can pay these installments weekly or monthly. And it's spread over an agreed period of time. Meaning you can, um, the period could be six months, it could be three years, it could be three months, it could even okay. be two months. However long you think. So that would be an agreement you and the service provider. Okay. Um, agree on. So whether you can, so if you think you can pay it in six months. They will calculate and tell you what that installment could be. Maybe you need a, a shorter time, you know, you could pay it in three, or maybe you need a longer time, depending on what's happening with your salary. That's true. All right. Higher purchase is, though, <laughs> a legal agreement. So, so, Latoya, from what I know about legal agreements, if, 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 <clears throat> if the agreement is breached, mm -hmm. then there are consequences. Mm -hmm. So, my... AKA take it I back. can't even say my goods, because it... It's it not yours. Yet, and so. I'm going to that point oh. now. So higher oh. purchase allows you, the customer, to acquire the item while still paying for it, unlike layaway where you will have to finish paying for the item before using it. So in your oh. case, you need a laptop, so you can take it out on higher purchase and you can use it while you pay for it. However, yeah. <coughs> the laptop is not mine. in true Jamaican fashion is not yours. <laughs> 
true. It does not belong to you until, until you would have completely paid for the item. So every single so, dollar that they, you agreed on, yes, you'd have to pay all of that. But that brings me back to point number one about the legal agreement because yes. it means therefore that if I forfeit or if I breach this, then since the laptop would not be mine, then it can be taken away from me. Yes, oh, until you finish pay for it. Yes. Okay. And I think we all know, but in the event you don't know, the higher purchase price is usually higher more than the cash price. Now, the cash price is the price, if you have cash, money, physical money, be it physical or debit card, mm -hmm. if you have the money in your account and can pay for it, that's one price. Yes. That you will usually see on the item when you go in store. But if you don't have the cash... You can take it on higher purchase. Take it on higher purchase, but just know that you are paying more because it did say plus interest. Right. So that additional amount charged is called the interest. Yes, ma'am, okay. So based on what I'm seeing here, higher purchase, then it has advantages. It and does. Disadvantages it does. Because I'm seeing the advantage where I can go and use the laptop right, uh, right. Can while I'm paying for it. You can use the laptop to make money to well, pay, pay for, for it. it. True. But the flip yes. side is I'm going to end up paying more. Well, I guess I'll just have it to wait and, and make a decision. Yeah. But let's talk about a question. And because see, hey. higher purchase is one of the most frequent types of questions in this category that will come on the CSEC paper. So well, it has students, come quite a number of times. Right. right. So the students will definitely want to know how, how to, to calculate. calculate definitely. Right? So here's a question from the January 2008 paper. All right. The so the cash price of a bicycle is $319 and 95 cents but if you don't have that money it can be bought on higher purchase mm -hmm. by making a deposit of 69 dollars oh, yeah. and 10 monthly installments of 28 dollars 50 cents each that sounds like another currency from jamaica but anyway <laughs> now let's see what we're asked to calculate the total higher purchase price for the bicycle or off the bicycle, mm -hmm. then we need to find the difference between the higher purchase price and the cash price and express our answer for part two as a percentage of the cash price. So that's quite a lot, but as usual, we tackle one part at a time. Now, when we talk about the higher purchase price, we're talking about Latoya, all the money that I would pay for this bicycle. Mm -hmm. Everything. 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 So it's going to include my deposits. Yes. And it's also going to include the total installments. All right? So all those 10 payments that I made of $28.50, yes. I'm going to have to include those in the higher purchase price. Right. So let's put that together. So we have our $69 for the deposit, and our total monthly installment will be 10 being multiplied by $28.50. And 50 cents. So now we have 69, which is supposed to be added to $285. So the bicycle will cost $354, $354 mm -hmm. if I purchase it using the high purchase plan. Yes, I am. All right, let's go to part two. The difference between the higher purchase price and the cash price. Now we said earlier that the higher purchase price is going to be more right, than the cash price. Right. That was already established. It was. And we saw that coming out because the higher purchase price that we got was $354. Yes. Right? And the cash price is actually $319.95. So we can right. see that clearly. And here the difference simply means that we're subtracting to see what's the extra, the additional amount to pay. And that extra and that additional, we would have said earlier, that's, that's the interest. interest. There you so go. not the interest rate, Just the but interest the interest. In dollars. Yes, mm -hmm. right. And that's what we are calculating here, which All is right, simply... So let's do our subtraction. How much extra? All right, good. So we would have paid $34.05 extra. Now there was a part three. There because we want to see what is this $34.05 as a percentage of the cash price. So clearly, clearly we need to convert to percentage, mm -hmm. right? So then 
I'm thinking that when, when, I, when I think about percentage, I'm thinking about what a hundred? The whole being 100. Mm -hmm. So I know that somewhere in there, 100 is going to be. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I get confused. Can you help me? Um, how, how is no it that problem. I'm going to So we're expressing our answer in part two. And just to recall that that answer would have been the interest paid or the difference between the total higher purchase and the cash pr higher purchase price and, and the, the cash, cash price. price. And we want to represent that value um as a percentage of the cash price mm -hmm. okay so my interest as a percentage of my cash price would be my interest divided by my cash price and that's because it's being found as a percentage of right the cash price and of course finding that percentage means i will now have to multiply by 100, 100. makes yes. sense that makes sense so let's put that Which in is and substituting see what we're our having. values. We know that the interest from previously calculated would have been thirty-four dollars and five cents, yes. and then the cash price, which was originally stated, three hundred nineteen dollars and ninety-five cents. Multiply. Now we have ten dollars six. Oh, what's that symbol? Oh my goodness. That now would we have, have been 10.6%. Yes, Why is that 10 dollar sign there? Percent. Never mind that yeah, dollar sign. This is crazy. That's yeah, a mistake. Type of error, but never All right, mind. Then. We're going to take our final break. We'll wrap things up when we return. So go. <laughs> Welcome back to class time. Now, Latoya, just before the break, and I'm sure our students are, you know, just really excited that they were able to complete a whole question, right? Right. A C set question, right? Mm -hmm. On higher purchase. And we want to afford them the opportunity to do another question. I agree. Yeah, just to cement the concept. I agree. All right. Now, this particular question says that a store is promoting a new mobile phone mm -hmm. under two plans. We have plan A and plan B. Mm -hmm. Now, the plans are advertised as shown in the table below. So, of course, I'm seeing that both plans have a deposit. Different amount of money, but a deposit nonetheless. Mm -hmm. They both have monthly installments, mm -hmm. one more than the other, of course. And the number of months to repay... Plan A has 12 months 
to pay and Plan B has six months to pay. But there's an additional part there. Tax mm. is charged on all payments if you should use Plan B, but there is 0% tax for Plan A. And I just see you rolling your eyes once <laughs> I mention tax, but never mind. Now I want to point out that this plan, if you notice based on what's in the table, it's not a call plan. No, it's not. You're actually doing a payment for the instrument, the phone itself. Taking out the phone on higher purchase. There you go. We're taking out the phone on higher purchase. Mm -hmm. The word higher purchase is not used, right. but based on the information that is given, it's actually a higher purchase plan. It is. So unlike the one we did earlier, there wasn't a cash price given per se. Right. So clearly we can't know how much extra we're going to be paying, etc. But we can find out how much the phone would cost under a particular plan. Agreed. So let's look at part one here. We're asked to calculate the total cost of a phone under plan A. Yes. Now, when we look at plan A, we notice that there is a deposit. Clearly, that must be included. Yes. And, of course, the total installments. Now, plan A is the one that didn't have any tax. Yes. So there is no need to include that aspect. As clearly stated on the table. Good. So let's fill in our deposit. So we're substituting $400 for the deposit. We know that based on the table, it's $65, and we're paying that for 12 months. Yes. So the total installment we're seeing on screen will be $780, and that, of course, needs to be added to the deposit to get the total cost yes. using Plan A. So I would basically pay for that phone using Plan A, $1,180. And again, this is clearly not Jamaica dollars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, part two says, determine which of the two plans, A or B, is the better deal. And of course, we must justify our answer. Yeah. So I'm thinking, Latoya, clearly, for me to do this comparison, I need to calculate plan B, the right. cost using plan B. We would have so we already have plan A, mm -hmm. yes. So go ahead and tell us how we can calculate plan, the cost under plan B. All right, so for plan B, as you can clearly see from the table, and I just want to implore the students that you want to go back to the information that was given for each part of your question. Very important. So for plan B, we're seeing where a deposit needs to be paid, followed by some installments, as well as a tax. And I deliberately asked her to do that part, you know, because you rolled your eyes. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So just substituting our information, we, as we can see from the table, the deposit is $600. The installment is six $80 payments. So we're multiplying our $80 by six. Yes. And we ne also need to add 5% tax. But I want to note that it says on all payments. payments so clearly we would have to determine what's the sum of the deposit and the installment before we can determine how tax. much tax is being paid okay so the deposit six hundred dollars or installment would have been four hundred eighty dollars and now we would find five percent of the sum of that six hundred and four hundred eighty dollars cool right and we know 5% is the five same thing as 500, mm -hmm. as you would have said, um, percentage is out of 100, yes? Right. And when we simplify... So we are seeing here that 5% of 1,080 is actually $54. Yes. So that's the tax portion. And when we sum everything together as we should, we would get $1,134, which means that... Even plan. though there's a tax exactly. on plan B, plan B actually works out to be the better deal of the two deals. And you see, that's so important, Latoya, because sometimes when we look at information at face value, yes. it gives a particular appearance. It does. But then when you actually complete the calculations, yes. you're surprised by the outcome. Yes. Yeah, you're surprised by the outcome. And so I want our students to... Um, recognize this, and especially as they're asked to justify their answer, then it means pretty much they need to back it up with some And just in real life, you will go to establishments and they present these nice deals 
to you. And it's always nice when you can, you know, go to more than one place and compare and know that you are getting value or the best value for your money. That's so true. So this is a real life. Yeah, definitely. You know? All right. So we are here to summarize. We have looked at quite a bit. We have. Quite a bit. So just in case anyone, you know, missed a particular segment, mm -hmm. we definitely need to summarize and highlight some key points coming out of this lesson. No problem. Firstly, All right, rate. so we did say <laughs> that rate refers to a fixed price paid or charged for something. And you gave a wonderful example right. about the... The, money the charged money by charged the... Money charged for cutting the yard. Right, there from the go. gardener. Or maybe it's painting. Or it's painting. How much is charged per square meter. Yes. Or that kind of thing. But we also said, Latoya, that rate may also refer to a comparison mm -hmm. of two related quantities. And we said that most times, most, most but not all, most right. times, the second quantity is time. So we may hear something like... Um, we're traveling a certain distance per second, maybe that's right. a rate or something being done per hour. Mm -hmm. But as we said, it could be anything. For example, we have here interest rate. We talked about exchange rate. Very important. And I mean, as again, this is real life. The exchange rate is very common to us as Jamaicans. It is. And sometimes when we go to our cambios, which we tend to do business in for exchange rate, yes. different cambios give you different prices. And you want to ensure when you are buying or selling your foreign currencies, you are getting the most. So it pays to shop around and check. Do and your know calculations. how to do these calculations. That's it. Right? Now, we also talked about tax. And we said that tax refers to a percentage charged on the cost or value of something. And the famous example, the one that's pretty much common to all of us, is the general consumption tax, which yes. is 15%. And we saw this earlier with the freezer. Yes, so sometimes you might go to an establishment and you one establishment says plus GCT, while another establishment might tell you tax is already included. There you, you go. You might want to be able to distinguish, you know, which of the two um, entities would have given you up. It's all about better deal. There you go. Value. Think and it makes money. sense to ask because yes. sometimes when you go to the establishment, you want to check, does yes. this price already include GCT? Right. So you know if you need to calculate and add it on so you're not surprised when you get to the cashier and you don't have enough money moving right along. Okay. <laughs> so we talked about higher purchase being an agreement yes. where you pretty much make a down payment or a deposit and you pay the balance in installments. All right, and that's pretty much how we calculate the higher purchase price. And the interest, of course, we said, is that extra. The difference between the higher purchase price and the cash price. And not the interest rate in this case, but the money. Interest in money. Right? <laughs> that's right. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this lesson. Thank you so very much for joining us today. Until next time, keep safe. Wash your hand. Sanitize. Wear your mask. <laughs>